Mary Poppins, a.k.a. Alan Shearer, might today be somewhat surprised at the sudden return of the two Newcastle United directors to the boardroom at the club, who so kindly likened him to the famed old nanny. Freddie Shepherd and Douglas Hall were also caught calling Newcastle women dogs and mocking the fans for buying overpriced replica Newcastle kit. It looks like it's money that is behind the change of mind. The club apparently found it difficult to go on without the two men. It believes it'll win more matches with them. But is that a good enough reason to have them back? Here's Robin Denslow again. There was a time, just five years ago, when Newcastle went wild to celebrate its football skill. United had been promoted back to the Premier League. They still hadn't paid out £15 million for Alan Shearer, and there were hopes they'd become the greatest team in English football. But it hasn't worked out. The club has had a rotten season, it ended 13th in the league, and even its share price has slumped by a half. Its directors didn't do much to help. There were angry demonstrations against two of them back in March. They were forced to resign for calling Tyneside women dogs and mocking supporters for paying so much for merchandising in a newspaper article. And now they're back, and those they'd insulted were none too impressed. I just think it probably shows a further disregard for what the seasoned fans and women of North East would want to represent their club, and I think it just symbolises the fat cats getting fatter. Newcastle are their business, aren't they? And really, you don't... How can I put it? You, a good businessman wouldn't put their spires down, and that's what they did. I think they should set some kind of example um, for, the, for the public as well as this. Uh, if they want to gain respect from the public, they should basically um, react and they should act in a civilised manner within the confines of Newcastle United. Freddie Shepherd made some silly, decidedly offensive comments, as did Douglas Hall. But should the fans really bother to take any notice? After all, these are businessmen, not celebrities like some of their players. But it seems that fans and management have a special relationship. And I think a marriage is a, is a useful analogy for this relationship. I mean, they are the sponsors of their clubs. They always have been. And, of course, that word and the word spouse come from the same Latin origin. And, you know, if, if the relationship breaks down, and I think, you know, respect is the most important element of the relationship between clubs and fans. If that goes just as in a marriage, you know, if you feel that your partner thinks that you're an idiot because you love them so much, it's not going to survive 20 years, is it? The bitter estrangement has been a major story in Newcastle since March. Now, it seems Freddie Shepherd is desperate to try to make up. Today, he gave an interview to the Evening Chronicle. The editor gave her assessment. He's worn his heart more on his sleeve. He's been more emotive. He said, I've been completely stupid. I've made a mistake. I have learnt from it. And I think that will make a little bit of difference to people that he's speaking from the heart. The little Tottenham forwards were never a match in that department for the tall, rangy fellows from the northeast. Football has changed enormously in the last 40 years in the era when Newcastle inflicted this outrageous 3-0 defeat on Spurs in February 52. Now in the new world of Newcastle United PLC and football as big, big business, fans are wise to keep an eye on what's happening in the boardroom almost as much as what's happening on the pitch. But those who control the finances are warned that what they're selling is a very special commodity. I think it's very important that those who are already at the clubs let them know what game they've got themselves into. This isn't an ordinary business, as you know, many of us have said on many occasions. This isn't pushing tins of baked beans. It's something a little different from that. And I think the clubs have to prepare those people who are perhaps not up to speed, uh, that they're engaged in a relationship and they have to behave like they are. So what should the returned, disgraced directors do now to woo back the angry public? Those who have drifted apart may find that the lavishing of gifts helps to ease reconciliation. Shepherd and Hall would be well advised to go out and buy some classy, very expensive new players. Robin Denslow reporting. Well, we're joined now by Malcolm McDonald, a former Newcastle star. Welcome to you. And by Nicola Hawkins, independent Newcastle supporter. And Steve Wraith in the studio here, who is uh, editor of the fanzine, which is called Number Nine. What's your view on the return of these two men? I'm ecstatic. Um, it should have been uh, a lot earlier. That's the only disappointment for me. 
I think that um, they should have come out and apologised in March when all this furore hit the press to start with. I think they've come out a lot earlier and made that apology. I think that um, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here now doing this television interview. On what basis should someone who thinks Newcastle women are dogs be put in, t in charge of the city's football club? My position as fanzine editor uh, of the number nine is basically to, to express the fans' uh, views um, is that via, the view? via the magazine. Um, basically, they write into the magazine and I express my own views in the magazine as well. And a lot of the fans haven't really cared, you know, two hoots about what actually happens in the boardroom. They're more concerned about what actually happens on the pitch. Um, I don't ever speak for the fans. Um, I'm, you know, basically just someone who conveys their, their views and their issues in, in the letters page. And uh, a lot of people are very disappointed that this is actually going on because it's bringing the name of the club down. Does it bother you that they, they insulted the fans to such a degree? It does. As, again, as my position of editor, I've actually looked into this. I've actually read a lot of transcripts of that particular newspaper as where that they've actually dealt with this story and I have been very disappointed. There have been a lot of things which have been blown out of all so proportion. So why are you supporting them now? Because they're 65% shareholders of Newcastle United. Um, there's not much chance of them ever leaving the club. They've been behind the, you know, the scenes pulling the strings over the last few months anyway. What is the point of them hiding in the background and not actually being public? And might you'll win well with them? You'll win might, with them? Of course. I, I'm not in with them. But, of course but you'll win I, with them, I, them I, I, am, I support them. I support them wholeheartedly. Okay. Nicola Hawkins, if, if you win with these two men, what's the problem? I don't see it as a problem. I just wish that the football side would uh, improve as well. But I think that also you do need um, positivity with the board. And I don't think we've got that. Um, what I want to know is why they didn't apologise so much earlier. Do you, do you regret the fact that they are sitting there on the board as of today and they, they are basically still in charge of, uh, or, or now going to be back in charge of, of running the football? They've always been in charge. They never left the club. They've always been there. Apparently, um, Freddie Shepard was involved with the Guivarch deal, and that was during the World Cup. So if that happened then, allegedly at the time, he was resigned. What do you think of Steve Wraith's point of view? Well, I, I quite agree with the saying that um, they're there, they've got the majority shares. But Steve Wraith has changed his mind twice in the whole, opinion, the whole side of it all, haven't you, Steve? I haven't changed, um, I haven't changed my mind at all. Basically, no, I've, stood, I've stood outside St James's Park since this incident blew up and basically backed Douglas Hall and Freddie Shepard from the start. And, you know, I, I haven't changed my mind on that. I have no. changed my mind on different opinions, but as far as I'm concerned, I've been fully behind them. Um, I did actually go on record when they eventually stepped down and said, well, it has been inevitable due to public pressure. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, I've, I've supported Freddie Shepard and Douglas Hall throughout this. You would actually no. play the, the Cray Twin on the wing if you thought they'd score. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's quite an interesting one, but uh, at the end of the day, one of them's sadly dead now, so you wouldn't be actually be able to do that. Malcolm McDonald, what's the answer to all this? The answer very simply is that uh, the players on the pitch have got to do it, because uh, I, I think that uh, here in Newcastle, that if there is success on the field and, and, and the kind of football that uh, keeps people talking from one Saturday to another, then a thousand sins can be covered up. I would like to take up with um, Steve, though I think he's trying to form opinion and not reflect it, because I, I've hardly met a soul in Newcastle who feels it's right for these people to come back. Um, and on, on a personal note, um, it, it is only because of their majority shareholding that they hold, that, uh, which, which can allow them back in. Well, what, what about the fact that, that, according to Steve, you'd be more likely to win with these two characters? Uh, they don't go out in the field and play. What they can perhaps do uh, is, with a hands-on approach, uh, by actually being on the board of the football club, is that they can personally involve themselves in the right kind of deals that can uh, eventually, in, in, and hopefully in the short term, bring success on the field for Newcastle United. Steve Ray? Well, I always stick with the same opinion that at the end of the day, these two men have got the financial clout to actually put into the football club. Um, they, they have been part and parcel of a lot of good for the club. They've actually invested a lot of time and money in the club. And along with Sir John Hall, have brought back the good times to St James's Park. I'm sure Malcolm and Nicola can remember the old days with the old tin stand, um, the Gallagher end in complete disrepute. Newcastle United being an average run-of-the-mill first division team. Now we've got a premiership team which competes with the best in Europe. And as far as I'm concerned, that is part and parcel down to them. We want to remember the good things that Freddie Shepard and Douglas Hall have done, not just the bad things. Yep. I'd like to know why we've been the victim of um, you know, press assassination last season, because not just the Douglas Hall and the Freddie Shepard incident, the Stevenage affair, 
the Alan Shearer and Neil Lennon incident, Newcastle United have spent more time on the front pages than the back pages last season. And I just hope that doesn't continue this season because it's very disheartening when you're a fan like myself. Nicola Hong, it's, it's difficult to argue against the, the point of view that says if you've got someone who's a centre forward, let's take Gaza for example, he's, uh, he plays in midfield, he scores goals, um, there's an argument that says if he beats his wife as well, what's the problem? I, I think a player should, um, should always be a role model. And if you're someone like Gaza, Alan Shearer, you've got kids who want to emulate you. You want to, you want, you should be a role model. Like children will want to grow up to be like you. Now, Alan Shearer is a fantastic role model for children. He's clean living. Now, Gaza, if he beats up his wife, kids may think, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. If Gaza does it, well, obviously it's right. Um, not, not wanting to have a go at Gaza or anything, but that's the example that's being used. And I just think that a, a player or a person in the limelight should act responsibly because people are influenced by them. Okay, thank you all very much. Steve Wraith, Nicola Horgans, Malcolm McDonald, thank you for joining us this evening. Yeah. Thank you.